Last year's auction was a lot of fun, and we raised a reasonable amount of money, and we got to the end, and we had no idea who we were supposed to go to. So we, we, this year we're much more organized. Every lot has been lined up in advance, and it's got a little exit and a place to write down who gets it and how much they pay and who the money goes to. And I'll be letting you know as we go along who the recipient of each of each lot is also. Uh, la, la, la. The uh, money that we raised today for Corfu 36 is not needed for the operating budget of the convention. And I hasten to add, it will not be added to the guest of honor on very <laughs> The money will be collected and passed on, for the most part, to John Purcell to start next year's Corflu uh, Treasury. Uh, assuming, of course, that we approve John Purcell's bid uh, tomorrow morning, and I'm sorry if any of you were in ignorance of that and are now, it's all, the, the ending is spoiled. <laughs> I would assume that we will, in fact, approve the Austin bid, and that sending them some money will be a, a great start for them. <laughs> I've also got lots that are set aside for the benefit of the Corfu 50, which is our major charity that helps bring people here this year. I'm rich. Who did we bring this year? Steve Jeffries. Steve Jeffries. There you are. Steve Jeffries. And I'm all, I had no idea who I was raising money for, but I'm delighted now <laughs> to find that you brought my Steve, my friend Steve over so I can finally meet him after corresponding for 20 plus years. I've never met him before. Didn't know the name until Jerry caught the photo up. He's a great guy. All right, so the way it's going to work is we're going to generally work. I want to work in one dollar increments. I don't really have anything that's really cruddy and therefore would be appropriate to bid quarters and litter, no stuff like that. Um, generally, we have fanzines, but we also have a number of core flu t shirts. Uh, some kind of core flu ephemeral memorabilia items, uh, like program books and stuff like that thrown in. Uh, we've got some pins that were donated for the benefit of TAP that are kind of cool looking. Uh, there's a signed copy of A Wealth of Fables. So that's Bill, but I'm I haven't yet sent the link to anybody. I haven't yet sent the new link to anybody to get into the ITP in the uh, Facebook group. Thank you for the <laughs> Um, and uh, I'm sorry, the Snickers disoriented me. I'm going to jump around in lots because I have requests for, I mean, the problem is, of course, we did the catalog uh, with the first 60 items at home, and then another 60 lots have been given to me after I got here this weekend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from both ends and work towards the middle. And also... Is that possible? Yes, okay. and then uh, <laughs> and we'll also uh, be uh, addressing the issue of the boys rather early in the auction because I had a request about that. But anyway, just for fun, we're going to start with lot number one because it's an issue of height. 
So question, are, yes. are you taking cash only or what are no, the we, okay, we, 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 Good we, we prefer cash. We will accept an IOU as well. If you have a PayPal account and you'd like to PayPal me after the fact, that'd be fine. Bitcoins? But, no Bitcoins. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. And no, no anagraphic drug, kind of. The, uh, uh, if you want, if you want, if you at the at the end you want to write a check, write make it out to Andy Hooper, and I'll I'll pass the money on right away to to the proper uh, party. I think we're not really set up to take a credit card, but again, PayPal will allow you to draw money from any source, and I've been accepting PayPal for uh, this convention all along. So. That, that's cool. Anyway, uh, this first item, uh, lot number one, is uh, for the benefit of the Corp Loop 50. It is issue number 21 of the fanzine hyphen from October 1958, edited by Chuck Harris and Walt Willis. It was donated by Nigel Rowe. Uh, includes uh, editorial by Harris, uh, Bob Shaw, Glass Bushel column. Uh, the Only Way by Walt and Madeline Willis. The Decline and Fall of English Literature by Bob Tucker. Uh, and several other pieces by Sid Birchby, uh, someone calling himself Obadiah Bitt, Vincent Clark, Van Lashworth, and art by Arthur Thompson. Let's uh, start this with a five dollar bid. Do I hear five? Yes. I have five down here. Do I have an advance of five dollars? Do I hear six? Obadiah Bitt is our name. It's the second link. I sent, I sent you two, two of them. One of them lost the connection very quickly. It's okay, I've got a $12 bid like against it. you. Jim, will you go 15 We have a $15 bid. Option two. Yeah, that's the one. I have a feeling $20 might end this conversation. It often does on many fancy. But 16 would keep it going. But 16 would keep it going, that's right. So I need $16 from someone. Okay. We have a $16 bid. Jim, any answer? 17 We have a $17 bid standing. Any advance on $17? And once, and twice, and sold to Jim Benford for seventeen dollars for the benefit of corporate business. Well All right. Now my plan here is to draw a big black X through things I've already done, and then just flip this over. Uh, let's go with lot number ninety-three. Which now, 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 one of my runners has to. If I got only one runner, <laughs> Mary, we need to bring them because we lost. Mary, do we? Well, I, I can let I can let Spike do this. Yeah, why don't you? Okay. Right. I need to get the Lot number ninety-three. As we're going along here is uh, Vega. Uh, you should read for Spike's. You should tell what page that is. What is on? Lot number 93, page number 41 of our internal catalog. For the benefit of the four to we have issue volume one, number four of Vega, which I do not have a date for, and neither did Rob Jackson. 1953, it was fairly early 1953. The fanzine was basically published from the fall of 52 to the fall of 53. And the content of this issue is Include Who's Who in Fandom by Marion Cox, Life by Chuck Lear, The Ill Wind by Marion Cox, What Every Young Fan Should Know by Marion Zimmer Bradley. Five dollars in the back. Any advance on five dollars? Six. Six next to you. Nigel? Seven. Seven. Advance on seven. Ten. Ten in the back row. Oh, I'm sorry. Any any advance on ten dollars? Fifteen. Fifteen up here in the front again. Fifteen. Any sixteen dollars is what I'm looking for. Standing at fifteen. Fifteen will go once. Fifteen twice. Lot number ninety-three sold for fifteen dollars. Two. Shout out your name because I can't see shit. Uh, Mowgli. Mowgli Asar. Yay. All right. Oh, yeah, everybody. Back to the beginning. Page two, lot number three. This is for the benefit of Tab. At least it's easy to find number three. Page, you want lot three or lot two? Lot number three on page two. I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna throw you many knuckleballs. 
This is the Easter Con Speeches Collection from 1979, published by Rob Jackson, uh, a collection of, of Bob Shaw's Easter Con Speeches, five of them running consecutively from 1974 to 1978. The volume includes, there is a uh, cover and interior art by Jim Barker, and introduction by Mike Glickson. And, uh, we'll open this at three dollars. It's a small, it's small size. Who will offer three dollars for this collection of Bob Shaw? <laughs> three bucks from Rich Code. Do I have an advance on three dollars? Do I hear four? <laughs> for these you know, you know, I'm doing it as well. Bob Shaw. I yeah. see four in the back from Kurt Phillips. Do I have an advance on four dollars? Five. Uh, five from Rich in the front. Will someone go six? Yes, yes, I know. I've got a patch on it for mine. You, you always sit down and, re and reply. Six once. Like <laughs> they tend to be worth me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm fooling the thinking of that. Five once. Five once. Five once. Five once. Five once. Five once. Sold for five dollars for Rich Code for the benefit of half. <laughs> I know, I'm forgetting. <laughs> I don't put the big black X. We're truly Okay. Lot number 12. For the benefit of 4236. On lot number 12 on page 6 of the internal catalog. Thank you. For the benefit of 4236. Collection of Bright Particular Star, 2002 Anthology of Writing by Lucy Hunsinger, published by Kim Hewitt in Australia, which is why it's one of the two Lucy Hunsinger collections on A4 paper. Uh, this was donated by J. Leslie Adams for the benefit of 4236. There are 12 articles written by Lucy between 1987 and 1995, including The Ben Yellow Mystique. Uh, Loves Heaving Bosoms, and Shadow Boxing the Blues, which is reprinted in the uh, uh, anthology that we just got this weekend. Uh, introduction by Kim Hewitt, and a nice condition. Do I hear a bid of something? Anything. I'll entertain one dollar. What have I got there? We got five dollars from Pat back there. Who will advance up five? Six. Six next to there. Seven over there? No. Shaking of heads. We're at six dollars. Seven there. All right, sorry. Jimmy, I'm mixed signals. I can't hear because people in the foreground are having a conversation. Eight. How good it is. Eight. There we are. Any minutes on eight? Do I hear nine? Nine. Let's see who it was back there. We have nine back here in the middle ground. Is that the ten? Ten over here. Do I hear eleven or twelve? Give me twelve. Let's shut this down. We can't even get eleven. We're at ten and going once. We are 10 and going twice. Sold for $10. <coughs> yep. Two. Two. Pat Percy. And who was the final recipient there? I couldn't Pat. exactly Pat. see. Pat. Pat, Pat, Pat Percy. That was for Pat Pierce. All right. I'll find one of these good things. You want to do a boy? Yeah. Somebody want to do a boy? We'll do, the, we'll do the first one. We'll do the first one we've got. All right. Um, gotcha. See, that's lot number 98, right? 99. 98. Lot number 98 is Boyd, volume one, number three. This is on page 44 of your internal catalog. All robots perform a self check. Um, this is volume one, number three, edited by Greg and Jim Benford, donated by Paul Skelton, as all these boys are. Uh, it includes A Traveler in Time by Ann Stuhl, uh, The Continent is Awake by Jan Janssen, A Jan Report by Benford, uh, Greg Benford, Out of the Void by Greg Benford, The Observation Post by Jim Benford, Void Reviews by Greg, and that's it. Um, is this it has one, a quality issue with the right? Back page. This this is one of the issues which has lost its back page. It's well, attached, no, but it is present. It's loose but present. They'd be happy to sign it for you. Now the uh, <laughs> there was a there was a possibility that we we're going to scan these this weekend, but it turned out we already have it scanned in. 
So it was not taken apart. The original staples are still in it. Someone give me an opening bid. Where should we start? Carrie. Carrie. I didn't see it. So I was just putting it by. I have a $15 bid. Any advance on $15? 17 17 in the corner. 25 from Nigel. Do I have 26 I have 30 back in the corner. Any advance on $30? Mm, think about that. It's because you're going to So I hear 31. I'm this, here 31. It's been across the ocean. It was addressed to Derek Pickles in Bradford, England. Oh, oh that makes it even Oh, it's across the channel. Way to go. That's a lot of pickles. Four, and five, and six. Yeah. 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 What's, <laughs> what did you say? What's that back there? We have a $35 bid. Any advance on $35? Once, twice, sold to Kurt Phillips? No, 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 no I'm sorry, I, I, I really cannot see the back of the room. So yell it out again for the for the reporter. 35, to Victor Gonzalez. Oh, Victor Gonzalez. He's really out of my sight. Victor? That was not what you wanted. <laughs> okay. You wanted four, five, and six. Oh, okay. Oh. And then you got Where were we before Victor's <laughs> bid of 35? <laughs> we were at 30. <laughs> Who had the bid before Victor? 31. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, neither did 30. Victor is Victor was bidding to represent someone who's not in the room, but if this was not the, the, the issue number that, that that person wanted to get. So we're at $31, is that right? Yes, Nigel uh, raised so we're, his own bid. Right, that's good of Nigel. So we're at $31 <laughs> once. Any advance on $31? Okay, so $31 for Nigel instead. And Nigel gets the <laughs> Now, since the fix has been blown, we'll just keep going. Uh, we're going on to lot number 99, Boyd, Volume 1, Number 4, November 1955. Edited by Greg and Jim Benford, donated by Paul Skelton. Those Happy Years by Ann Stuhl. Some Archaeological Digging by Joe Gibson. SF is Worth a Bite by Walker, by Walter Ernstein. Ernstein. Uh, first and Second Encounters by Greg Benford, Out of the Void by Greg Benford, The Verdict by Jim Benford, and Void Reviews by Greg Benford. This is intact, oh, excuse me, this is complete. The fact sheet has separated. It is uh, the, 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 the online, the previously posted online scan was lacking the back sheet, but we just think we're going to incorporate that now. So, you know, for fair warning, these are up online. Okay. Do I hear a bid of ten dollars? Andy, the back sheet of this one does seem to be attached. The previous one, it was not. Really the, back the back sheet is not attached, but it's not the back sheet. Uh, okay. Good. So the original staples too, because that. Yeah. yeah. I think I think this is the one where where um. Okay. Joe, this 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 issue cuts off in the middle of a letter by Walter Willis, and there should be another sheet somewhere there that is the back sheet of this issue. That sheet is there. The, the, Joe, Joe and Mark only needed the back sheet, and the back sheet is present. Maybe they they scanned the back sheet by itself. That's all they needed. Someone needs to be looking at the other voids. Gary. <laughs> Okay. okay, well, as soon as the back sheet. No, I saw the damn thing. Okay. I held it in my hand. It should the, uh, the number six has a loose back sheet. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, number five. Number five apparently is missing the back sheet because there's no address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. We need to skip number four while you find the sheet. Okay. Okay. Um, wait. We're going to skip number four for right now. Okay. 
This is the page. This is number four. This is what I said it is. Okay. Thank you. I know. I saw it. I read this last thing. So, issue number four. Oh, boy. It is complete. The fact sheet is present. It is loose. I gave you all the contents a few moments ago. I'll have to start bidding. What do you want to offer me, Jeff? 10. We have a $10 bid. Do I have any advance on $10 for number four? Okay. Uh, Robert Lakeman bids $100. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, okay. Well, I think he probably got it. Yes. Okay. Do I have any advance on $110? Sold to Jim Benford for $110. Excellent. Lot number 100. Boy, issue seven. Number seven. God, Rob. All right, so now we're skipping out of order and going to issue number seven. Oh, boy. Also edited by Greg and Jim Benford, donated by Paul Skelton, including Weed Fiend Scream by Ron Bennett, The Deluge, fanzine reviews by Greg Benford, and German reviews by Question Mark. Any idea, Joe? <laughs> uh, it's, it's probably Julian Parr. Yeah, I was going to say all the rest of them are by Julian Parr, and so it would suggest that probably Julian did it. Uh, and then let's confirm once again the condition of this issue. Is it complete? And, and that the back sheet number is not five, come Confirm that number seven. five is complete. Seven. We're looking seven. at seven. Look at seven. <laughs> number seven is complete. I keep asking this question. That is complete. This is not on there. No. Do you want numbers? <coughs> I just want to find it. What was it? Chaos rays. Andy, I bid fifteen dollars on issue number seven. Okay. We have a fifteen dollar bid on issue number seven. Do I have any advance on fifteen dollars? What the hell are you doing now? Okay, I got the sixteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a little bit longer. Fifteen dollars. Go a little higher. Fifteen twice. Sold to Nigel Rowe for fifteen dollars. <laughs> and we did find the back six sheet number combination. Yeah. I'll sell that online if you want. <laughs> what do you want? No one else would bid. What am I? Who am I going to give it to? I have one bid for fifteen dollars. <laughs> Uh, lot number 101. <coughs> Boyd, number five. It's here we have it's that complete. confirmed as being intact. Original staples, back page not falling off. <laughs> or if it is falling off, it's there. Back page, oh, is, yeah. back, back page is loose but present. Right, the back page is loose but present. <laughs> this includes Why Don't You Believe Me by William Strike. Uh, the Wetscon by Greg Bedford. Out of the Boys by Greg Bedford. The Verdict by Jim. The Void Reviews by Greg. The German Reviews by Julian Parr. Cover by Terry. Cover up by Terry G. You left one item out. And it's uh, La Fray Mini Dune de Fan by Terry Carr. Oh, that's your right. That's a Terry Carr piece. Oh, that's a Terry Carr Right. So, once again, this is for the benefit of Core Flute 50. And. Um, I'll start at 16. Okay, we have a $16 bid. 20. I'm sorry? 20. A $20 bid. Any advance on $20? 25. 25 from Nigel. Advance on 25? 
Thirty. Uh, thirty dollar bid. Any advance on thirty dollars? Going once, twice. Sold for thirty dollars to Robert Lickman. <laughs> One mustn't feel bad about this. I mean, you know, sure, I could go and find some collectors online and I could get them to pay more for these. And then I could go through all the bullshit of mailing it to them and then they get damaged in transit and then they demand their money back and it's all just a new chagas. And I, it, you know, we, we can't, you can't dwell on what should things, should things be going for. These are the people in this room this is the money that they've got, and these are the things that they're interested in buying today. So just let go of you know what things are supposed to go for if you can. We have one more issue of void here like on my list. It's number 102. Uh, no, there's another, yeah, actually two more. I have two more issues of void. I have one more in this early sequence from Paul Gelton. This is issue number six from April 1956. And what's the condition of this one? Um, pretty good. He has an like, intact back, which is um, it, it's it's not stable. The stable is loose. Uh, loose but it has, uh, okay, somewhat loose stable. Out of the void by Greg Benford. Deutsche Derogation by Greg Benford. Void Esquire by Ellis Mills. Void Reviews by Greg. German Reviews by Julian Carr. Uh, cover Art again by Terry G. Can I have a $10 opening bid? Okay. Do I have an advance on ten dollars? That's addressed to. Do I have a fifteen dollar bid? Do I have an advance on fifteen? Twenty dollar bid. Advance on twenty. Twenty five. Twenty five. Thirty. Thirty. Thirty five. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Wow. Seventy five dollars. No, that's not for you. Okay. All right. So we're at seventy five. Any, anybody, want to, anybody been lying in the weeds and now feel like they just won a most mid seventy six terribly bad? I think we're going once and twice and sold for seventy five dollars to Robert Lickman. This is lot one hundred and two. This is lot one hundred and two on page forty six. Okay, that's good. So we got through those those voids that people really worked up about. And that was about <laughs> so yeah, what uh, what number is that, Jim? Uh, just had it in front of you, right? Uh, it's a testament to Jerry Carter. It's a Terry Carter. Okay, you work on that. Um, let's go back to near the beginning. Page five. Lot number nine. Lot number nine. You guys wagering on what I'll do? No. <laughs> I want some action. Okay, I'll get. Okay, next up. All right. Right now we're going to do lot number nine, which is issue number twelve of Burblings by Charles Burby, dated February nineteen sixty three. This is uh, something Steve Stiles sent me to sell, and no one on the internet wanted it, even when I put it up twice. So screw them. <laughs> And uh, trying to sell, trying to auction this. Uh, a, a scene, uh, well, I, I'm also I'm trying to make it clear that you're have much better taste than you. Oh. This is distributed through FAPA. Headings include in in uh, Burby's editorial, which is the entire contents of the issue: bulls and turkeys, in which doing bullfighting on television on station KMEX leads Burby to ask. If we would give up Thanksgiving, if uh, Thanksgiving turkey, if the Spanish would stop fighting bulls. It didn't make any sense to me. Donovan on the carpet discusses air rifle experiences of the 1920s and 1930s, including you'll shoot your eye out. Uh, Gutter Gold on uh, the once and future allowance that kids receive. And then my favorite article is called Now's Your Chance Bubbles on a Fourth of July incident involving sortation and apparent sanitation. <laughs> Uh, can I hear three bucks for this? 
Okay, one instance. Five. I have a three dollar bid down here, and five. I have five back there. And seven. Advanced on five dollars. Seven. I hear a seven. Ten. I did. Yes, you did. And a, and a ten. 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 All right. You ten over. <laughs> <laughs> Any advance on ten? I have ten once, twice. Sold to John. Mm -hmm. yes. Sold to John D. Berry, who will. No doubt, eventually give it back to me to sell. It again. <laughs> when he does send it to me, <laughs> we'll be right there. We're going to do eight, and then we'll go to eight before he tells us. Back one page, two page, four. No, 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 I don't think so. Oh, okay. Okay. Lot number yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah. Now I've, I've had. I don't know if she's got that to the end. By Frank Lunny, who pointed out that while Graham Charnock attributed all the art. Mm -hmm. To Felix Dennis, the front cover is actually. Okay, I'm sorry. We'll switch away from number eight and we'll go to lot number 50. Which is <laughs> all right. Back to the back to the thing I just laboriously. No, I haven't even laboriously described. Okay, issue number five, April 1968. A file, personal fancy from Graham Charnock, donated from the collection of the late Raymond Byers. <laughs> Uh, includes Portrait of the Artist is a New Dog by Charnock, Beleaguered Marine, uh, and Documented Fiction by Christopher Priest, Delaney's Quest Novels, reviewed by Charnock, Rhubarb Time by Dick Howitt, uh, Un Homme et Un Film, et un film Cinema Review by Christopher Priest, The Camp Camp by James Sherwood, and front cover actually by Harry Bell. But there's a lot of interior illustration by Felix Dennis. If that's the reason you're in. Anyway, uh, let's start with a $5 bid. Five, ten. Uh, 10 from Frank. Advance on 10. 15. 15 down here. 20. 20 from Frank. Advance on 20. <laughs> Once, twice. Sold to Frank Lunny for $20. Then next by request, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up all the voids that we have by going up to lot number fifty. And when I find it, I'll tell you what page is on. That is on page number twenty-four. Lot number fifty is donated by Ben. This is another thing from Randy Byers collection. I'm pretty sure I saw this at Corpo in Las Vegas about ten years. Uh, so uh, this is issue number 17 of Void from May 1959. Cover photo of Bill Rickhart by Harry Lowinger. Uh Includes Heavy Benford Chatter, an Uppish Thoughts column, uh, Criteria for Critics by F.H. Ford, uh, Ill, Ill, Ill by Richard Wingate, Leftover Campaign Literature by Art Rapp, The Wailing Wall by Ted White, and a monograph on the aerodynamic properties of the Morris by Larry Stark. And that's that. Okay. Do I have any interest in this at all? I'll take any bid. $10. I have a $10 bid from Nigel. Advance on 10. 15 down here in the front view. Any advance on $15? 20. I have 20 from Nigel. Advance on 20. 25. 25. Advance to 30, Nigel. <laughs> We're at 25. And we won't linger on much because we spent so much time on figuring out what we're doing. 25. Going once. 30. $30 from the front row. $30 against you now, Nigel. Will you go to 35? Oh, that's, that's that, 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 that was oh, uh, Jim. We're at 30 once. 30 twice. Sold to Jim Benford for $30. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go Sircon on you. Sort of. Lot number seven. Can I get number seven, please? 
This is an issue of Bruce R. Gillespie's SF Commentary, number 79, from February 2004. Another thing from Randy Byers' collection. This is the second edition of the Tucker issue. It includes uh, an introduction, a brief history of Bob Tucker, banned by Tony Weisskopf. Uh, Paul Walker interviews Bob Tucker. A Thousand and One Nights at the Bijou by Bob Tucker. The Mysterious Wilson Tucker by Leslie Luttrell. Hidden Heroes. The Science Fiction Novels of Wilson Tucker by Bruce Gillespie. Tucker's Two Futures by Hank and Leslie Luttrell. Where We're Arriving by Gillespie. And The Work of Wilson Tucker, a Bibliography by Phil Stevenson Payne and Denny Lee. A giant dog choking wad of Bob Tucker. <laughs> Beautifully produced, one of the rare printed copies. As you know, Bruce has had to make fewer and fewer printed copies as we go along. There probably were maybe 50 to 75 of these made. Yeah. And, you know, so you can't get them. Anyway, will someone give me three bucks? Five. I have a five dollar bit at the back. Any advance on five dollars? Takes me so long to describe it, you can't dawdle. Any advance on five? Eight. Eight dollars up here in the front. Ten in the back. Advance on ten. Once. Twelve. Twelve in the front. Fifteen. Fifteen in the back. Any advance on fifteen? Once. The battle Seven. of the past. Seventeen. Seventeen in the front. Twenty in the back. Twenty-five. No, she says no to twenty-five. Oh, twenty-one. <laughs> we're at twenty. That. Pat says, Pat, your spice is good on, Pat. So we're at 20 for Pat. Any advance, once, twice, sold to Pat Berzy for $20. Thank you. Cost that much to post him. Mm -hmm. So is it a right dollar yep. anyway? <laughs> oh, God, I forgot. Let's do, okay. Robert Lakeman, what did he spend? About 200 bucks? Before. Something like that, yeah, was a very generous contributor to this auction. So let's let him make some of that up, uh, uh, make it a further contribution by selling some copies of his zines. We're going to start with lot 43, which is on page 20. This is an, uh, an issue of Robert's Gen Zine Trapdoor, number 18, dated May 1998. This is uh, from the collection of the late Kate Ewell in Portland, Oregon. And uh, it includes cover art by our lovely Steve Styles, Remembering Rotzler by numerous contributors, How to Disappoint a Sick Friend by Carol Carr, Letter to Burby's Granddaughter by Bill Rossler, He Had the Fire in the Belly by Bill Donahoe, uh, In Search of Immortality by Ron Bennett, Sap Founders Reunited in Albuquerque by Joe Kennedy, The Baxter Street Regulars by Charles Burby, and in memoriam, Ted Falls by Steve Stiles. As usual, enough stuff for three normal fancies. Uh, I, will anybody offer me three dollars for it? Yeah. Are you interested in three? Five bucks. I have a five dollar bid down here. Any advance on five dollars? Six. Six for six there. Any advance on six? Ten. Ten dollars. Advance on ten. Go eleven, Bridge. You don't have this one, huh? Yeah, I have holes in my collection too. It's mysterious. So I don't know why you do Eleven dollars? Oh, we no ten. We're at ten. We're at ten for Mowgli. And that's enough. Once and twice. And sold to Mowgli Oscar for ten dollars. What? Oh, what? Uh, what? Oh, read this napkin. Oh, that was love number forty three. Forty three. Right. So we're moving on to page twenty one. We're moving on to lot 44 on page 21, another issue of Trapdoor, issue number 19, May 1999. Contents include a uh, front cover by Dan Steffen. That's the astounding um, oh, with, the, with the hands. We just saw that a little while ago. Fantastic cover. Uh, Tijuana Taxi by Ron Bennett. My Sensitive Cyberface by Lucy Hutzinger. San Francisco and the Big Beat by Bill Bryan. Uh, Beachcombing by Dave Langford, not Vietcombing. The Creature by Richard Brand. Harmony by Jim Harmon, I call. Uh, Dave Van Ronk and Songs of the Bosses Artists by Boyd Rayburn. Musings of a Pseudo-Philosopher by Gary Deindorfer. And Vince Clark's 115th Dream by Chuck Harris. 
another jam full issue. Do I get three dollars? Five dollars. I have a five dollar bid in the back. Any advance on five? Ten. I have a ten dollar bid in the front. Any advance on ten dollars? Eleven dollars? Well, I have twelve from the back row. Any advance on twelve? Fifteen. Fifteen from the front? We're at fifteen. Any advance on fifteen dollars? Going once and twice and sold to Mogliasor for fifteen dollars. Good job. All right. Moving on to the to the other the remaining issue of trap door that we have. Um, uh, number twenty, July of two thousand. Uh, also from Kate Jules collection. Front cover art by Steve Styles. I'll see you in the firelight by Jeff Shallis. Beside the Artist Waters by Avram Davidson. Uh, Alice in Bania Land. Dania Land? I don't know. By Alice Sanvito. Uh, Adventures in H. Wood by Greg Benford. Stuff by Carol Carr. Harmony by Jim Harmon. Our Man Inn by George Metzger. And The Cool Collector by <coughs> Charles Burby. Uh, once again, do I hear $3 opening bid? Five. I have a $5 bid from the front. Any advance on $5? Maybe this is where we'll go. Five dollars once. Eight. Eight. Ooh, oh, eight. Ten. Ten. We're at ten. Anyone go eleven? Ten once. And twice. And sold for ten dollars. Don't only ask them. All right. Now <laughs> to underscore my calumny and my villainous nature. <laughs> I now ask Sandra Bond to produce a run of trapdoor number one to twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> this was donated by Claire Briley and I knew nothing of it. And so I then, you know, <laughs> got out little issues to sell one by one. <clears throat> so now here we have everything that Mowgli just purchased. <laughs> in addition to, I believe, I think they're all here. I can't yeah. guarantee it. Oh, you, you went through? Yeah. So this is every issue of Trapdoor, number one through number 23. And, um, and there's no lot number for this. There's no lot number, so we're just uh, going to go to the last page <laughs> yep. and draw one more number. Yep. And that's what this is. Okay. And I would like to ask, let's say I want an opening bid of 20 bucks. Well, can you read all the content, please? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can, but it'll be after you're in a call. So, <laughs> so, would you like, would anyone offer $20? What's the yeah. support? What? What's the support? Yes. What? What's the support? What? What? Corfu 50. Corfu 50. 100. All right, I have a $100 bid. Any 125. Advance? I have 125. Any wow. advance on 125? <laughs> yeah, I know my stomach hurts too. <laughs> right. Any advance $125 once, twice, sold to Mobile Asser for $125. Yeah. All right, I don't really have any more of those tricks to play <laughs> as far as I know, yeah. All right, moving on to number 46, because it's fun, and it's on my page, which is page number 22. And uh, we have an issue. Uh, this is the David Hartwell Memorial issue of New York Review of Science Fiction from February 2016 put together by Kevin Maroney and the other editors of New York Review of Science Fiction, donated by Jerry Kaufman and Suzanne Tompkins, memories of David Hartwell from more than 40 colleagues and friends. So um, I you can assume that there's a lot of both Spanish and uh, professional people involved. Uh, beautiful, glossy production, really nice condition. Would anybody offer me five dollars for this memorial? Five dollars. I have a five dollar bit in the back, ten dollars there, advance on ten? Twelve. I have twelve in the back row, advance 15. on twelve. Fifteen from Dan. Advance on fifteen. Twenty. Twenty from Pat. I will keep it twenty one. Do we have this? <laughs> <laughs> Once and twice, sold to Pat Verzi for twenty dollars. 
That was lot 46. That was lot 46, correct. All right, let's jump up here to some more of the really old stuff that, uh, that Ron Jackson brought over. How about, let's go, okay, we, we, yeah, these are just, these are just cute. Uh, lot number 72, lot number 72 on page number 33 is an issue of The Time Binder by E. Everett Evans, volume one, number two, from 1945. Uh, it includes uh, a lot of editorial by Evans and uh, the, that dusty shelf by Don Brazier. Really early Don Brazier, jeez. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, wow, you learn something every day. Um, it's in reasonably good shape. Yeah, the second one's in a little rougher condition. This one is pretty intact. Will anyone give me three bucks? I have a three dollar bid down here. Any Five. advance on three? Five dollars from Sandra. What do you want it to be? Seven. Seven dollar bid. And advance on seven dollars. Seven once. Ten. Ten from Dan. Eleven. Eleven from Chris. We have an eleven dollar bid and he advanced to twelve. Eleven once. Twice. Sold to Chris Couch for eleven dollars. Okay. And since we're you know uh, cognitively there, let's sell the next lot, lot number seventy-three, which is also an issue of E. Everett Evans the <clears throat> Time Binder. This is volume two, number one. No month, but published in 1946. This includes Psychological Dangers of Conscription by Russ Whitman, U.S. Army. Religion, uh, Religion as I Believe It by K. Martin Carlson. And The Philosophy of the Dilettante by Art Whitmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> this is another uh, donation by Paul Skelton for the benefit of the Corp. 50. I'll start at 10. And we have a ten dollar bid in the back there. Any advance on ten dollars? <laughs> Front and back covers match. They're lovely. Okay. You could make it. Any advance on ten? Two twelve. Oh. Where's fifteen? Fifteen was back there. Fifteen from Chris. Yeah. Yep. I'm oh, sorry. Fifteen. Seventeen. Any advance on seventeen? And once. Twenty. And a twenty dollar bid. Twenty one, Spike. I'm twenty one. Twenty one against you, Chris. Now, who's benefiting from this? Corp 50. Goes for the Corp 50. 25. All right. $25 bid. Any advance on 25? Anyone else in the room? Once, twice. Sold to Chris Couch for $25. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep trying to find this really old stuff. I'm slipping forward a few more pages, Spike. Let's go to. Let's do the other hyphen. Lot number 84. Lot number 84 is issue number 20 of hyphen from February 1958, edited by Walt Willis. Contents include a glass bushel column by Bob Shaw titled Perchance to Sleep, The Return of Grunch by Vince Clark, Fans That Never Were by Mal Ashworth, and uh, uh, Adam front cover and stencil stuff. <laughs> this is actually in real good shape. A lot of uh, hyphens that I've auctioned have been kind of rough, but this one is really clean and nice. Do I have a $5 opening bid? Five, five from Rich Stone in the front. And yeah. Advance on five with $10 from Sandra. 15. 15 from Dan in the back. Advance on 15. Looking for $16. 20. 20 over here. Advance on 20. Looking for $21. We got so much more to do. Sitting at 20 once <laughs> and twice and sold to Victor. Yeah, Victor for 20 bucks. Yay! <laughs> All right, let's move on to the very next thing listed on page 38, lot number 85. Tomorrow. This is another item for the benefit of the court. Food 50. The uh, issue is volume one, number four, <laughs> winter 1938. Editor is Douglas W.F. Mayer and includes The Felicitometer by Maurice K. Hansen, 
Hiking and Camping in AD 20,000 by I.O. Evans, Unification <laughs> of Progress by F.V. Gillard, and uh, published by the Science Fiction Association of Leeds, of course. And as I saw there, uh, pretty intact. As you yep. can see, wow. it's small, but relatively clean. Small, but perfectly formed. Small, but perfectly formed. <laughs> can I have an opening bid of $5 on this item? Five. I have five in the back row from Kurt Phillips. Advance on five. Ten. We have 10 from Mowgli in the front. Advance on 10. 1938 Fantasy. Advance on 10. 10 once. No more interest. 10 twice. Sold for ten dollars, a bargain from Mowgli Oswald. All right. How about a book? I'm jumping <coughs> way too back. And lot number one hundred eleven. Thank you. This is a copy of A Wealth of Fable. The sci-fi hardcover edition from 1992, author Harry Warner Jr., History of Fandom in the 1950s, and this copy is signed. It's also immaculate. It's really, really clean. I really, I mean, I doubt that it's, I doubt it's been read, at least not in it hasn't kind of, read. Yeah, any kind of aggressive way. So this is essentially a near-mint copy. And uh, I'd like to start that. Let's just start at 10 to speed it up. Yeah. Okay. I have 10 down here from, from yeah, what's the back? $25 bid. Who's the cover by? $30. $30 in the front. <coughs> 30 against you, Kurt. Thirty five. like Steve. No. No, 30's a limit. Anyone want to jump in at $31? Mm. 31. 31 in the back <laughs> of the pad. Okay. <laughs> so 31 against you. And. You're good. He says, well, that's going to fall on you, Pat. 31 once, 31 twice, sold to Pat Gersey for $31. Yeah. I want to step back one lot to lot number 110. This is a copy of Her Smoke Rose Up from Supper. A cookbook that was produced in March of 1983 by Jean Gamal et al. for the benefit of the James Tiptree Jr. Award. It includes recipes by 70 different people, including me, as well as uh, Marge Piercy, Phyllis Ann Collar. Uh, I'm just, I was just, I mean, a whole lot of feminist writers, uh, feminist sympathizing fans, people generally down. With the Jane, with the Tim Tree Award idea, uh, have contributed. Carrie, do you have a recipe in there? I forget. I think you do. They're alphabetical, so you yeah, should be there. Is this the first one or the second one? This is the second one. This is a, this is an actual cookbook. The first volume was called "The Bakery Men Don't See," and it's just all desserts and things. I added a dessert. Right. So Carrie added. Right. You were here. Anyway, uh, this has recently been reprinted, but there are no issues. There are basically no copies of this first edition left anymore. Jean Gamal actually gave me her personal copy for auction, Oof. which I did at home, and I'll get to it eventually. Uh, so, would anybody offer me $5 for it? Ten. I have a $10 bid in the front from Steve. Advance on $10. Any advance on $10? $10 once. Twice sold to Steve Jeffrey for ten dollars. Let's go. Uh, we're going to stay here at this end with all these things that were donated um, near the end and by by people that only gave me a couple of things. So we'll go to lot number one hundred twelve on page fifty, which is donated by Joseph Clary, and it is issue number eight of Terry Carr's fanzine Innuendo. August 1958. Uh, contribute. Uh, I was rushing to try and get a listing of this this morning, so I couldn't write down all the article titles, but there are contributions from Terry Carr, Ron Elick, Ron Bennett, Dave Wright, Harry Warner Jr., Dick Ean, Pete Graham, and Royal H. Drum. 
Uh, the final three chapters of The Catcher in the Rye are included in this issue also. Excuse me, Andy, what number is it again? This is, I believe it's number eight because it's dated August. It's August. It's the second Anish. And there's no number anywhere, but we looked at the we looked at the listing in Fancyclopedia, and the only one that's 60 pages, and from August, and it's dated August, is issue <laughs> eight. So uh, the number is conjectural. It is, however, the first Anish, and has all the material we just said. <clears throat> Will anyone offer me five dollars? Five dollars. Five dollars from Oakley. Ten dollars from Sandra. Advance on ten. 20. 20 from Dan. Advance on $20. 25. 25 from Sandra. Oh, sitting with Sandra at 25. Any advance on $25? $30. dollars from the back corner. Advance on $30. 31. 31 from Dan. Advance on 31. 31 once. Twice. Sold to Dan Stephan for $31. <laughs> We have another issue of innuendo, which is lot number 113, also on page 50. And this one is actually numbered. It's number 11 from December of 1960. Both of these are solely edited by Terry since Dave Wright had stopped uh, contributing by issue 5. And uh, contributors to this one include Elick, Burby, Carl Brandon Jr. Spear, Donahoe, Warner, and B. Joe, who was not the B. Joe Trimble. And there's a cover by Ray Nelson. And it was sent to Ed Messers. And <laughs> addressed to Ed Messers. So, so uh, once again, can I have a $5 opening bid? Five. I have five from there and ten from Mowgli. I advance on ten dollars. Oh, twelve dollar bid. Advance on twelve. Fifteen. Fifteen. He leans his head, indicating a, a, a discomfort. Fifteen is our bid. Any advance on fifteen dollars? Going once. Twenty. Whoa! I've got to break that tie. Someone's got to give me twenty-one. <laughs> Someone's got to give me twenty-one. Twenty-one. Twenty-one in the back. We are twenty-one in the back. Twenty-five. Twenty-five in the front. Any advance on twenty-five dollars? Oh, thirty. Okay. There you go. Thirty dollars is our bid. Any advance on thirty? Thirty-five. Thirty-five dollars. Any advance to thirty-six dollars? It's a very good hit. Thirty-six. Uh, excuse me. Thirty-five once. <laughs> thirty-five twice. Sold to Mowgli Astro for thirty-five dollars. Okay, let's move on to lot number 114, a completely unique item that Murray Moore brought me this morning and which I just could not resist trying to put in the <laughs> this, is a, this is a ring binder with a bunch of notebook pages inside it, created by the late Bill Rossler, uh, sometime in the early 1970s. They're essentially a whole bunch of interlineations and clever little lines and passages that he was writing down with the idea of incorporating into something in the future. It was a project called Coke Book. Yes. Right. Okay. Anything else you can tell me? Um, he published at least one fanzine issue of, uh, of this compendium. Eventually, it was supposed to be a big book. And was, was, this, like, were the, was this material he was like gathering from other Yeah, he gathered from all so, kinds of places. He right. just sort of collected these interesting snippets of quotes right. that then and he thought he could turn it around into a product of it. Okay, so it's actually kind of like, you know, a, a workbook for a fancy. <coughs> and, and absolutely a unique item. Will anybody offer me five dollars for it? Any interest at all? I'll take it home. Okay. Five bucks from Mowgli. Any advance on five dollars? We're already getting tired, I know. <laughs> five once and twice and sold to Mowgli Asa for five dollars. Now, uh, let's go back to page 23. We're looking at science fiction five yearly issue number 12, November 2006. This is the last issue, which is a lot number 47. Another item from Randy Byer's collection, since he was, uh, it's interesting, he was actually one of the editors, so. 
and a really lovely back row. Yeah. Editorial by Jerry Sullivan. Uh, uh, contributions by Ted White, Harlan Ellison, Graham Charnock, Christina Lake, Kip Williams, Rich Cove, Claire Briley, Rich Brown, Andy Hooper, and uh, Jerry Sullivan again. So most everybody, you know, a lot of us have got this. I don't know if anybody's going to be interested in it. Will anybody offer me something? Already got it. Well, we probably doesn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find out. All right, five bucks from Mobley Asshole. Anybody else who didn't receive it? This is the issue that won them the Hugo. Right, yeah. this is the yes. Hugo winning issue. Probably the last ever duplicated fanzine to win a Hugo. So five dollars mm. once, <laughs> twice. <clears throat> Given the Mowgli Asar for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, any any requests back there? Let's sell some shirts. Let's sell something that's not a fancy. Let's try to move a few of the t-shirts. T-shirts back on the back row on the uh, on the chairs. And they start with what's the Carrie? Can you tell me what the number of the T-shirt starts with back there? Fifty-five. Fifty-five. So let's go up to lot number fifty-five. Which is on page twenty-seven. And this is actually a T-shirt from Court Lou Valentine. <laughs> The uh, 19th court blue, 17 years ago in 2002. It is size extra large. The the art was executed by Steve Styles, as the motto of the convention: "Feel the love." And uh, this was donated by Stu Shipman, who doesn't seem to have worn it very much. It's not very stretched out. <laughs> and uh, that's all. That's all I've got for you. So uh, give me a three dollar bid, someone. Three dollars. Three dollars from Carrie Root. She likes it because it's not a black shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Any advance five. on three? I have five from Mobley. Carrie, will you go six? Six. Six dollars. Advance? He says no more. Uh, any any advance on six dollars for this core food collectible once twice sold to the lovely Carrie group. Oh. Long time ago. Carrie, yeah, I hope you took note of that. Uh, let's Graham. On, let's let's Graham do, on the chat now. Uh, well, no, uh, lot number fifty-six. Let's get to the real question. Lot number fifty-six on the same page. We have four blue triple X T-shirts. Uh, art by Dan Steffen from Fort Wayne just six years ago. Size L. Uh, donated by Perry Root and not worn very much because although it's not black, it's not very. Three dollar bid. Three dollar bid. Three dollar bid for this T-shirt. I three dollars from Brooklyn. Any advance on three dollars? Anyone willing to pay four bucks for a four black T-shirt? Four dollars from Steve Shepard. Five Brooklyn. Sure, got five dollar bid. We go six. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. All right. We have yeah, six. And you can even get a. All right. The most expensive T-shirt yeah. today so far. Yeah. We're at $6 once yeah, and twice. Well, sold to yeah. Steve yeah. Jeffrey yeah. for $6. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right. Okay. <laughs> We're at eleven dollars, and if Graham, you know, if Graham wants to offer another enough for another bid, then maybe we should start a tea party. It's a problem having if we're going to have people from uh, abroad bidding, we have to have somebody dedicated to giving their. Bid. Graham says twelve dollars. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, Mowgli says fifteen. Graham, what do you want? It's good we can actually talk. It's yeah. helpful. Not having to <laughs> he, he says he's out. He's out at fifteen. Jules. <laughs> All right. So the Fort Bluesy T-shirt actually goes for fifteen dollars. <laughs> To Mogliasso, which is worth another hand. We just bought the same thing twice. <laughs> Go for the three There's three. irony there. Okay, we're going to keep going in this sequence because we're doing well. Lot number 58, also for the Corfu 50. Ninth annual James Tiptree Jr. Award t shirt created by the collage artist Freddie Bear. Very uh, colorful shirt, unusually so. Uh, Freddie does a lot of stuff on black too. She did, she, she did a t shirt uh, to benefit the Tip Tree Award for like the first 15 years that it was given. And these are pretty highly collectible. It is an XL. Is that right? 2X. A 2XL. I'll start with 5 inch. Okay, $5 from Dan. Do I have an advance on 5 bucks? 10 $10 from the front from Sandra. Do I hear $11? I have 10 from Sandra. 10 ones. Twice. Sold to Sandra Mom for ten dollars. Okay. All right, I got one more T-shirt in the <laughs> sequence. Number fifty-nine. Lot uh, number fifty-nine is a Corflu six T-shirt, uh, size XL. Uh, the art by Stu Schiffman, I believe. Let me see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even. Yes, I don't remember what that is. Oh God! Yeah, right, it's, yeah, it's kind of like that blue. Beautiful. It's that thing. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Oh, wow. Is that Seattle? No, that's Minneapolis. That's Fort oh. Blue Six. Oh. Hmm. So this is one of the earliest T-shirts, actually. Yeah. This is one for four. We did one for three. We did one for three. But there wasn't one for one and two. So. Okay. Well, so very early T-shirt from '89, size XL, also owned by the late Stu Shipman. Do I have a three-dollar bid? Three dollars from Mowgli. Any advance on three dollars? Five from over here. Advance on five. Seven dollars. Ten. And ten. Mowgli says Basta. Ten dollars over there. Any advance on ten? Once. Twice. Oh, Turn around. Turn around. Sandra. Trump's never wanted to Okay. <laughs> Sold to Rob Jackson, so mysterious bidder with $10. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, put All it on. Right. Put it on. <laughs> no. I know. I'm going to keep going right now to the next lot, which is that poster. So you're going to have to take the rubber band off the poster and get it opened up. Maybe some people are going to want to collaborate on pulling this thing open. This was donated by Steve Stiles. It's a piece of art. It's a photo stat, uh, but they have enormous size of art that Ron Cobb created for the cover of issue number 21 of Psychotic. The first revived Put that in your office. This was yeah the first revived issue of Psychotic in November of 1967. Which lot now, is this? This is lot number 60 on page number 28. And this is, as I said, donated by Steve. And we were talking about Ron Cobb earlier in the previous art program. He's uh, a well-known designer who has created the Earth Day logo uh, and wrote the first draft of PT. Uh, he's got a lot of connections to science fiction. Anyway, this is a beautiful piece. I don't, I didn't see any real edge damage or cracks. Like it's got tack marks in the corners. Okay, <laughs> there are some holes in the corners. But on the other hand, it's also basically a one-off. I don't think there are any others in the world. Why don't you give me a ten-dollar opening bid? Anybody want it for ten bucks? Ten dollars for Mowgli, just on general principle. Any events on ten dollars for this one of a kind item? Do it practical. Actually, if I've got it, I've got a tube I could put it in. 
Um, Auction maybe. the tree. Maybe, because you have to part of the two ball. Oh. Yeah, right. And I've got something else. We're at $10 for this unique piece of memorabilia, uh, ephemera, memorabilia, art, art, fun, this 10 once, twice. 15. 15 for Nigel. No, not from, from behind. Busy. Yeah. Yeah. Pass, pass. Mowgli says no more for him. $15 once, twice, and sold the Pat Jersey for $15. <laughs> Let's go to lot number 62, which is the first of a series of issues of Trumpet, a unique magazine created by Tom Remy. <coughs> One hesitates, well, of course, here we would never use the phrase mere fanzine. So, yes, this is a fanzine, but it's unusually slick and interesting. Um, this is issue number four, April 1966, edited by Tom Remy, including Hard Shark Campbell Me Sex and the Common Man by Tom Perry, The Broken Sword, an eight page comic strip by George Barr, wow. The Bohemian Tory by Jerry Cornell, Dr. Faustus by Dan Bates, Tarzan and How He Grew, or Whatever Happened to Jane Baby by John McGeehan. Doctor Who, Adventures in Time and Space by Alan Dodd, the science fantasy film Revisited, reviewed by Tom Remy, and you, you, you the comic book uh, by of the Alex Eisenberg, uh, Shatty, for George Barrett's work. Mm -hmm. Some of the George Barrett work in there is amazing. Is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I have five dollars? That's five dollar bid from Mowgli, and the events on five. And... Ten over here. Advance on ten. Fifteen dollar bid. Advance on fifteen. The fancy that inspired Brian Talbot. Uh, yeah, and a lot of other uh, small magazines. Twenty. All right, we have a twenty dollar bid. Twenty five. Twenty five from Mobley. Any advance on twenty five? I have a bunch of these to sell. So once, twice. Thirty. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars against you, You better not have it if you pay thirty for it. Thirty-five. It's thirty-five against you, Spike. Spike says, oh, "Okay." Anyone want to jump in after thirty-five? Once, twice. Sold to Mowgli for thirty-five dollars. Now I've got four more issues of Trumpet including number five, which is lot number 63 on the next page, page 30. Lot number five from April 1967. Contents include the compost heap by Alex Eisenstein, CPCC by Andrew J. Offit, uh, The Fan Who Lost Things by E. Everett Evans, uh, LK Productions by Larry Klobukowski, down with Strange Love by Richard Hodgins, Og by Irwin and Lawrence, Two by W.G. Bliss, The Bohemian Tory by Jerry Cornell, and The Long Matinee by Stuart Oderman. Once again, unique, lots of unusual graphic material and photographs. Do I have $5 over bet? $5 from Mowgli. Advance on five? Any advance on five dollars? Five once. Twice. <laughs> Sold them over for five bucks. Okay. <coughs> what else are people interested in me getting to back there? I could tell that we we're kind of uh, lagging. We're not going to umbras. Yeah, okay. Issues <laughs> of Umbra, which are on beginning on page 36 of the catalog with ish, with item number 80. Item number 80 is issue number 10 of Umbra, night, December 1955, edited by John Hitchcock, including Hunster's Paradise Lost by Noah McClaw, The Tangled Two by Larry Stark, Hot Milk and Spiders by Ron Bennett, Good Von Deren Angles by Jan Janssen, a Report from Europe by Greg Benford, and a Multicolored Deal of Cover by Ted White. Again, uh, December 1955. Can I hear five bucks? I have five from Dan. Any advance on five dollars? Ten. I have ten in the front from Mowgli. Advance on ten dollars. I have fair warning. I have three more to sell. Ten dollars once, 
twice, sold to Mogley for $10. Okay. We've got three more of these to do, so just turn the page over to page 37. And we have issue number 12 of Umbra from February 1956. This one including In Defense of Modern by Larry Stark. How to Write Poison Pen Letters by George Wetzel. Letters <laughs> 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 by Jan Janssen. Uh, and a cover by Ted White as above. And one or more back pages, one or more pages are missing from the letter <laughs> column on the back. So there, this is an incomplete yes, uh, no, copy. No back, but. Can I have a bit of $3 to open? I have three dollars to start. Any advance on three? Five. Five from the back corner. Any advance on five dollars? And once? Uh, seven. Seven dollar bid from the back. Victor, will you go eight? Yep. All right, eight dollars from Victor. <laughs> Ten, Dan? No, I'm good. Dan's good. Any advance on eight dollars? Once? Twice? Sold to Victor Gonzalez for $8. Okay, on the same page, page 37, lot number 82, we have uh, Umbra issue number 13 from April of 1956. Oh, John Rolls. His name is John Rolls. Sent to John Rolls. Okay, including okay. The Threat by Larry Stark, The Practical Joke of Lucius Beebe by George Wetzel. Bit Van Der Engels by Jan Janssen. Antwerp's of Host by Jan Janssen. And a cover by Ted White. Do I have a $5 opener? $5 in the front? Nine. And nine in the back. Do ten. I have 10? 10 in the front. Any advance on 10? Any well, further interest? 12 in the back. Advance on 12. 15. $15 in the front. Do I hear 16? Cut motion in the back. <laughs> 15 once and twice. Sold to Mowgli for $15. Okay. Now, you must be getting tired. Let's just snap. All right. Um, and then, oh, boy, there's more. I'm, I'm catching up to things I've already had. Lot 15. Lot, okay, next up, after lot 83. We're going to do lot 83 and finish the Umbras. This is issue number 15 of Umbra, August 1956. John Hitchcock, editor. Sense of Wonder by Andy Young. Big Blender and Angles by Jan Janssen. Son of Univac by Larry Stark, and another bit of cover executed by Ted White. Five bucks? No back. I have, and no back sheet. Oh. Three bucks? <laughs> we have a three dollar bid in front. Any advance on three? Five. Five in the back. Nine. Nine? Because okay. bid, Victor bid five also, so I'll go nine. All right, nine in the back there. Do I hear ten? Ten up in the front. Any advance on ten dollars? And once, and twice, and sold them only for ten dollars. Yay! Okay. Well, now I had a request for lot number fifteen. Is that right? Yes. What time is it? Ten to five. Ten to five. Ten minutes to five o'clock. Yep. I have nine minutes to five o'clock. No, no, no. Yep. Four minutes. Okay. So we may go. We may go another thirty minutes. Lot number fifteen. On page eight, back at the beginning, this is donated by the Randy Byers Collection for the benefit of Vanac.org, which is another edition. Uh, uh, this is issue number five of Wrinkled Shrew by Pat and Graham Charnock, and um, uh, dated February 1976, includes the grand and glorious game of Vanac. A board game on on uh, fanzine and other elements of fandom uh, created by Pat and Graham. Uh, it's also Rhubarb Time, a column by Dickie Howitt, All the Fun of the Fair, The Memoirs of Roy Kettle, Part Two, and a three-page comic strip by D. West, Calvin M. James, The Terminal Beachcomber. And do I have an opener of uh, five? Uh, ten, ten right here. Fifteen. Fifteen in the back. I'm an admirer. Fifteen. I have fifteen. Eighteen. And I have eighteen now. Okay. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Look, should have done this earlier. Twenty-five in the back. 
Okay, we say nothing in the front. Any other interest at $25? Once. What did he say? 35. 35. For Nigel. 40. 50. You don't need me. 55. 75. Whoa. $100. Whoa. 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 Didn't I have another one? Was there another rainbow? Yeah. Uh, All right, we're going to jump back to page seven, back one page before. I that. tried, Graham. I want to number 14, which was, it says dumb, but yeah, no, it'll probably be something else. Victor's your number one fan. This is issue number 10, volume three, number two, spring oh, oh, 1951. Oh, I guess you YouTube. You, 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 Red Ball. You, you two be donated by Kim Hughes. <laughs> this was sent from America to Australia and back again. Uh, it includes uh, distributed to yeah, Papa. I think Victor yeah. went with uh, the D Ross Comics editorial. Sure that's Song why in a Minor it. Key by Catherine L. Moore. Companionate Marriage, Why Not by Marion Z. Bradley. Oh my God. The Comfortable Disease, fiction by Red Box. And uh, I paid a bunch for this. Do I hear a five dollar bid? Five, yeah. Ten in the back from Dan. Do I hear fifteen in the front here? Actually, there are multiple fifteens. Give me a sixteen. Uh, twenty in the front. We have twenty. Any advance on twenty? Twenty dollars for Skyhook number ten. Was a really cool back cover. I got her. Well, yeah, beautiful thing. Beautiful. Yes. Sold for $20 to Mogliasso. Yes. Good job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Up at the top of the same page. Lock you got one of the highest ones, Graham. What? Graham got one of the highest bids on a fan, single fan. Absolutely, yes. This yeah, is yeah, Chuck, yeah. the fanzine. February 1986, edited by Abaddon Carroll and Rob Hansen from the Randy Byers collection. It includes front cover art by Rob Hansen, an intro by Abaddon Carroll, Oral by Patrick Nielsen Hayden, Our Lady of Pain by Dave Lankford, Thank You Girls by Christopher Priest, and Finding Out by Jean Demol, and then an outro by Rob Hansen. One of my favorite fanzines of the 1980s. Yeah. And that's about Priest discovering the Beatles. Yeah, and the thing about Chris Priest is all about how he discovered the Beatles and how that changed his life forever, as it did most people. Any interest at five bucks? I've got five from Oakley. Any advance Ten. on five dollars? Ten for Sandra? No, me. Ten from Rob. I've got okay. this already. <laughs> Sorry, well, yeah, of course. I have Ten dollar bibs? Oakley says no. Any advance on ten dollars from the rest of the room? Ten dollars once, twice, sold to Rob Jackson or whoever he represents. I oh, know me. That's just you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, any anybody who could see anything in the back that they want to do. Voice of the imagination. The what? The voice of the imagination. The bombs. Yeah, let's get to the bombs. Let's get to the old voice of the imagination. Is Kurt still here? Or did he have to go? Kurt was interested. Had to go. In the uh, 88, page 39. 88, page 39. Okay, so we want lot number 88. At the bottom of page 39. Yeah, voice of the imagination. Issue number 12, March 1941, uh, edited by Forrest J. Ackerman and Maroyo. Uh, includes letters of comment from Tucker, Ted Carnell, Walt Leacher, Art Widner, Cy, uh, sorry, Louis Russell Chauvenet, Arthur C. Clark, et al. Uh, 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 some Esperanto and phonetic spelling. <laughs> <laughs> So, again, this is from uh, March of 1941. 
and it, it and we looked at all these bombs, and they're all there. So five bucks. Five. We got five down here. Ten, ten in the front. Ten. Any, any advance? Fifteen. Fifteen over here. Okay, advance on fifteen. Twenty. Twenty from Mowgli. Yeah, we'll get through these bombs, and then we'll do the Vegas. So we're at fifteen. Is that right? We're at twenty. I'm sorry. We're standing at twenty. Any advance on twenty dollars? Twice. Sold to Mowgli for twenty dollars. Okay. I'm going to turn the page to page number forty, lot number eighty-nine, Voice of the Imagination, issue number thirteen, the next issue. So there'll be locks in this one on the one we just sold. This includes material uh, letters from Harry Warner, Bradbury, Paul Molesworth, Claude Degler, Elmer Perdue, Andy Young, and Ted Gardner. Do I have a five dollar opener? Five dollars in the front. Advance on five. Ten from Rich. Do I have an advance on ten? Just go to twenty and get over. <laughs> fifteen. We have a fifteen dollar bid. Any advance on fifteen? I have to pay for myself. I appreciate it. All right. Seventeen dollars. Yeah, Ford it again. All right. Amazing country. Twenty in our bid. Advance on twenty. Twenty once. That's twice. That's great. Sold the mobile for twenty dollars. Yes. On the lot number ninety. This is issue number twenty-four of Voice of the Imagination, edited by Forrest J. Acker and Roy of the Inaugural 1942. Including letters from Roy Tackett, who was then neither horrible nor old. Ron Holmes, Bill Temple, C. S. Yowd, and Len Moffat. And it cannot be listed on eBay because it's a naked lady. Fine cover by an artist identified only as Bell. I'm not sure that. Okay. All right. Yeah. And uh, once again, do I have a twenty dollar opening bid? Ten. Five. Two. Ten. Ten dollar opening bid from Mowgli. Any advance on ten dollars for this crazy cover? <laughs> Just give them all to him and, and take all the money out of his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn him upside down and grab it. Right. It's probably going to be PayPal. We're at ten, though. We're just at ten, and this is the raciest cover we've had yet today. <laughs> ten <laughs> once, <laughs> twice. Sold to Mowgli for ten dollars. <laughs> you want to take a break from the bombs? No, no, keep going. Okay, we have, three more to go. have one more that we actually have a listing for. Uh, lot number ninety-one. This is issue number twenty-seven. The Voice of the Imagination from September nineteen forty-three. I thought we had number forty-six or something. We may. Well, I. There's one more after this. There was one you didn't. Yeah, there's one more after this. Sorry. Uh, yeah. This includes letters from uh, two letters from Francis Towner Lady, one from Bob Block and one from Elmer Perdue, plus editorial material by Ackerman. And we're looking for an opening bid of, let's say, $10. Okay, well, I've got a $10 bid from Sandra to open. Sorry. I know it was it was mean. So, so you're not again. We're we're number well, twenty-seven. We're gonna go fifteen. Any advance on fifteen dollars? Sandra wants to look. Number twenty-seven. Yeah. Fifteen once, twice. Sold them over for fifteen dollars. All right, and I'll be true to my word. I got one more listing for Voice of Imagination on the next page, page 41. Lot number 92. This is issue number 46 from September 1945. Uh, this includes The Voice of the Collaboration by Jim Kepner and Bob Tucker. Really Senses Out of the World by Bob Block. Oh my God, that's an awful one. <laughs> or wrote by any other name by Henry Elser Jr. It's block what you expect. Say is Melcito Cujo Marifandom by George Gallant. Uh, Dream from Deutschland by PSA Joe Gibson. Get Behind the Guild and Kick by Roscoe Wright. And Discord is one of the strings of fandom by Julian Carr. 
Uh, <laughs> I want uh, five. Yep. Five opening bid. Advance on five dollars. Ten. Ten from over here. Fifteen. Fifteen from Mowgli. Advance on fifteen. Fifteen once. Twice. Sold to Mowgli for fifteen dollars. Okay. Now I have a request for lot number thirty-one, please. So let's find out what that is. Lot number thirty-one. Yep. Ah, Button Tack, the Rick Sneary Collection. Dated, this is a second edition from 1993, created by Len and June Moffat, John Hurts, and Ed Cox. A collection of Rick Sneary's writing, along with testimonials from friends, including Red Boggs, Mike Blyer, Robert Block, Ed Cox, Bob Lickman, Ethel Lindsay, and Dean Grinnell. Uh, it's, and it's, um, it's a big, thick piece there. So, who wanted this? Five dollar bid? Five dollars in the back. Okay. Do I have an advance on five? Any other interest in Button Tack, the Rick Sneary collection? I have five dollars once, twice, sold to who I can't see. Who your tees for five dollars. A bargain. Okay. I want that. What's what's the one that has the new picture of uh, of the comic artist? Um, help me. Fan a, sorry. Fan yeah, the Trina fan Robbins. Trina Robbins. What number is that? Forty nine. Let's do lot number forty nine. Maybe you can get this is issue number 53 of Fanac, fanzine edited by Terry Carr and Ron Ely. This is from Randy Byers' collection. This is the Anish. This is the Anish with the uh, nude but very tasteful photo of Trina Robbins on the cover in a beanie. She was later uh, she was centerfold in Rogue magazine. But not at this stage. But but you'll have to find that on your own. Right. Right. Front cover photo, yes, yes, it no, includes an index of the previous fifty-two issues of Fan Act, results of the Fan Act poll, and a whole lot of fanzine reviews. Dated February twenty-fourth, nineteen sixty. <laughs> Any interest in this? Five dollars in the front. Any advance on five dollars? The cover alone is worth five dollars. <laughs> Ten bucks. Ten bucks from Rich. In advance on ten. Fifteen. We oh, yeah, have fifteen from Mowgli. Advance on fifteen. Any in interest at sixteen? Fifteen dollars once and twice, and sold to Mowgli after for fifteen dollars. Yep. Lot fifty-seven. Eighty-seven. Okay. So we got you got forty-nine for me there, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Lot 87. Veritas. Veritas. After all the umbros and the tomorrow. What page is that? Page 39. 39. 39. 87. This is Veritas, dated 6 November 1957, produced by John Barry, the Irish version, and Arthur Thompson. Donated by Paul Skelton. Uh, includes Odd Notes by Arthur Thompson, Call Me Hero by Alan Dodd, The Half Nelson Touch by John oh, Barry. So As I was saying to my psychiatrist, Oops. first session by John Barry. Hand stencil cover by Adam uh, for, for uh, Ompa. This one is for the benefit of Taft, and we haven't really sold a lot of stuff for Taft. So, who wanted to buy this? How about <clears throat> giving me five bucks to start? Twenty. All right. We have twenty. We jump straight to twenty. Any advance on twenty dollars at all? Uh, twenty-five. Okay. <laughs> twenty-five against you, Nigel. We'll go to thirty. Good. Thirty dollars. Advance on thirty. I'll let it go. Okay, that's very nice of you. Mm -hmm. Thirty dollars <laughs> once, get twice, and sold to Nigel Rowe for thirty dollars. Okay. 
Maybe like what, 70, what, what, 75 or not? 75. You say 75? Yeah, page, so, page 34. Okay. Lot number 75 for the benefit of Corfu 36 yeah. is uh, an undated issue of tomorrow and, I'm oh, sorry, uh, issue number one of tomorrow and by Jerry Lapidus. Uh, all editorial con uh, content in this first issue, single sided, on ditto. Uh, handwritten note on the back asking Peter Weston if he would trade for speculation. Um, and that's what we got. Uh, do I have any interest at uh, $3? Five. Five from Sandro. What's up? Any advance on five? Who suggested it? I don't know. Sandra did. That's a lot. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sandra did. Okay, that's fine. Let's, uh, let's, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, let's sell that to you for five. Okay. And Sandra, Sandra gets this for five dollars. Now, lot number seventy-six, lot number seventy-seven, lot number seventy-eight, and lot number seventy-nine are all issues of tomorrow. And would you like me to bundle them into one lot? Is there an interest in that? Was there an interest? Well, number one was that seventy-seven? Seventy-six, seventy-eight, and seventy-nine are here. Oh. The other this, one this was seventy-five. Okay, all right, excuse me, excuse me, 6, 76, 77, 78, and 79. That's it, it's just one of them is issue eight, the one that's still still 77 is not. Oh, they're still working on one in the back. No, no, no. So we lost, we lost issue number. Andy, what was, what was? Lot 77. That's issue number eight. Yeah, that's the one we're missing that's, that needs to be restated. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, all right. So, so the issue is there, but there's no issue. Okay, it's included. It's included and will be restated. So, this is a lot of four. This is all four of those lots in the 70s that I listed. It's four issues of Tomorrow and by Jerry Lapidus. Some of the content, uh, there's a lot of interesting contributors here. I'm not going to read them all. David Gerald, Rosemary Colliott, Robert Bartman. Well, of course, it's certain values are interesting. The Warrior Robots series by Richard Bergeron is in that number eight that we're getting restapled because they were scanning that stuff. An Analysis of the Clockwork oh, Orange sorry. by David Wise. Melbourne Diary by John Foister. Uh, and so, a lot, and a lot of other material. So we're going to bundle these four together, and I'd like a five dollar bid. Ten, ten bucks. And ten dollars here. 15, ten, Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. He says no. Twenty-five for Sandra once, twice. Sold to Sandra Bond for twenty-five dollars. So that's all. But all four of those lots gone. Okay, we're pretty much out of energy, aren't we? Can you do 97? Want me to do 97? Okay. Get a lot number 97. Well, hey, let's uh, let's go back and do. All right, yeah, 97. Let's. Uh, but I'm yeah. I think we got like maybe five more things I'm going to get out of here. So let's go. Let's start with number 97, which is viewpoints. Number two, Autumn 1952, created by Roscoe Wright, a Portland, Oregon fan of the 1940s and 1950s who died tragically young uh, in surgery for a relatively minor ailment. He was a fantastic silk screener, an amazing multi lift uh, art. This is very plain, unusually so for him. But a uh, fascinating guy. It includes Sanity and Armageddon by Gerald Pierce, an editorial by Roscoe, and uh, typeset submitted to FAPA, says Rob. Any interest in this at $5? Yes. Yep. I've got a bunch of hands. Someone give me five, five, five there, ten, ten here. Okay. Cool. Eleven? Cool. Twelve. Well done. Twelve? Any advance on twelve? Roscoe. 
15 in the back there? 15 yeah, from Mosey. 15, 15 from Mosey. Sorry. Depth perception issue. 15 for Mobley in the front, going once. Any 16, advance on 15? 16, 16. 16 from Nigel. Mobley says no more. Any advance on 16? New bidders? Once, twice, sold to Nigel Rowe for $16. Okay, and I want to get rid of these issues of Vega that, that we've got here. Um, the, uh, the fan theme that inspired Nidal's disease. Hmm. So I'm going back just a couple of pages, Sandra, to lot number 93. Um, I have 94. Did we already 93 is gone. 93 we did. So let's go back to 94. We're going to do 94 and 95, the other two issues of Vega. So that what we have here is volume one, number five. Uh, this, this has got Who's Who in Fandom by W. Paul Ganley, An Intelligence Test by Mary Wolf. The Ill Wind by Marion Cox, Galactic Empire by Charles Dinsoff. We have Robots by Dean A. Grinnell, when What Every Young Fan Should Know by Marion Z. Bradley. Uh, and this is I no date. No date. But it is a cover by Ted White. And a cover he, by Ted he vouches for this. <laughs> Any interest in this at five bucks? Five bucks for Mowgli. Any advance on five? Ten. Ten from Nigel. Fifteen. Fifteen from Mobley. Advance on fifteen. Sixteen. Sixteen from Nigel. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty-five. Yeah. Any advance on thirty-five? This was the Forty. focal point fanzine of nineteen. We have a forty-dollar bid for Mobley. Any advance on forty dollars? Once. Forty-five. Okay. Well, he says no, you've taken the break point. 45 <laughs> for Nigel. Last chance, once, twice, sold to Nigel Rowe for $45. And we have one more Vega, number 11. Is this the is this the one that killed it? No. 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 Is it no. the Anish? No. The one before the Anish. Right. Right. This is, right, so no, this is number 11. This is the last rational one. <laughs> right. yeah, coming out monthly throughout the year, year, and then the Anish there was a significant pause. The only column that I have noted here is "Will there be a science fiction slump by Matt Hopkins?" What he says most of the Anish, didn't he? Yeah. Is apparently a uh, pseudonym, but I don't know who it's a pseudonym of. Anyway, uh, once again, this is from uh, fifty. Six. Seven. Fifty-three. Fifty-three. Ten bucks. And we got a ten dollar bid. And you made some ten dollars. Fifteen. Fifteen in the front here. Twenty. Twenty from Mobley. Advance on twenty. Any advance on twenty. Twenty dollars once. And twice. And sold to Mobley Asset for twenty dollars. Okay. Okay. God, I'm tired. Um, one more. One one number 53? Lot, lot, okay, okay. Uh, one, 11, and we hear number 53. So I'm going to go to 53 first because I'm closer to it. Page 26. Yes, page 26. Waroon, issue number 14 from January 1962 by Richard Bergeron from the Randy Byers collection, including The Loves of Yesteryear, Rodan Rossi. And Sears Robot, Accident, Accidental Denomics by James Blish, File 13, a column by Red Boggs, and The Grand Inquest of the Nation by Jerry Cornell. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. <laughs> that just makes me wet. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from January 1962, and the series was, is this the first one of the renewed series? I don't think so. No, no I think that was like 12. Like 12. Yeah. So this, but this is from the second series, and and when they were particularly slick looking. In, in the fifties, it was a sap scene. Right. Right. And this is not. In any event, we had a request for it, so I want five bucks. All right. We have five from Sandra. Any interest in advancing on the five dollar bid? Yeah. We have ten from Mowgli. Fifteen. Fifteen. We have fifteen. We have fifteen. 
No, no interest in front of the 15? Under 15. Sold to Sandra for $15. Okay, what was the other number you quoted at me? Hey, no, I'll tell you what, same page, lot number 54. The Incomplete Burby, Volume 2, 1996 edition. Uh, put together by Jeff Chalice. This is from Randy Byers' collection, so I don't want to have to take it home. Uh, published by Jeff Chalice, working from Terry Carr's original stencils. Includes three dozen articles by Burby originally published between 1945 and 1960. Headings and interior illustrations created in 1924 and 1995 by 10 different contemporary fan artists working at that time. Uh, and that's just sold online for 20 bucks. So it's a bargain. I'm asking <coughs> just five for it. Any interest of five dollars? So the incomplete Burby volume two. Five in the back. Any advance on five? Ten. Ten up here for Sandra. Do I hear an eleven? Eleven in the back. Fifteen. Fifteen in the front. Any advance on fifteen? Twenty. Twenty in the back. We have twenty in our bid. And and a gesture of supplication. Twenty once. Twenty twice. Sold to Luis. Luis. Yes. <laughs> now, what was that other thing that you requested that I eleven, instructed? eleven, eleven, number eleven. That should be easy to find. Page six. I said commentary. Eleven, page six. But this is commentary eighty-three. Oh, but well, we're going to go back and do ten as well. Number eleven is this really nice Zircon issue of SF Commentary uh, by Bruce Gillespie. Uh, number eighty-three from October two thousand and twelve, also from Randy Byers' collection. This in, uh, includes a fantastic survey called "Discovering Philip K. Dick" by Guy Salvage, with an overview of every one of Dick's novels. It's one, it's just a, one of my favorite Zircon fanzines I've ever read. Letter column includes feature letters by Mark Plummer, Patrick McGuire, Franz Rottensteiner, Yvonne Rousseau, and Murray McLaughlin. Uh, and Raj Payton shares his list of the top 100 SF novels. Uh, again, from October 2012, from the period where basically there are no paper copies available. Can I have a $5 opener? Five. Five in the back. Any advance on five? Ten. Ten from Mowgli. Any advance on ten? Fifteen. Fifteen from Rich. Advance on fifteen dollars. Sixteen. Sixteen. Sixteen sure. from Frank. Twenty. Yeah. Okay, Twenty. Let that shut down. Advance. No, That's good. no more. Twenty dollars once. Fine. <laughs> Rich. Hold for twenty. Yay. I had a request for lots five and six. Who lots bought, number five and six. Who bought eleven? That was Rich. Rich. That was Rich Cove. For his own fun, I believe. It's five and six. Five and six. Oh, Edgar serious. Rice Urozines. Lot number five uh, is yeah, issue number yes. 12 of The Barzumian, March 1967, edited by Paul C. Allen, including Locating Tarzan's Birthplace by the Reverend Hardy Blaine, Laugh It Off by Edgar Rice Burroughs, 1943, from the service uh, newspaper, oh. TV Tarzan's Ron Healy by Paul C. Allen. Yes. Superman ER Supernaturally ERB by Fred uh, can't read. Burroughs Publicity by Paul C. Allen and the front cover art is by George Schneider. Can I have a five dollar opener from whoever's interested? Not fair. Uh, Chris. Yeah. Chris. Okay, five dollars from Chris Couch. Any advance on five bucks? Five once, twice, sold to Chris for five dollars. And let's see if you can get this other uh, Burroughs fancy as well. We have issue number 15 of Herbdom, the Hugo winning Edgar Rice Burroughs fanzine by Camille Kaz Kazadusis, donated by me because it fell on me in an online auction. Hmm. And it includes Pellucidar, The Perfect Paradox by John F. Roy, a glossary of Pellucidar by Benjamin and Roy. The problem Roy. of this timelessness. This is lot six, correct? Lot six, yeah. The Problem of Timelessness by Mike Resnick. Richard A. Lupoff, Master Sleuth by Kaz, and front cover art by Reed Crandall. And again, Chris, will you open a five? Sure. We have a five dollar bid. Any advance on this Borosine from five dollars? Uh, ten. Okay. Oh. Ten up in the front from Mowgli. Sorry, anybody go eleven bucks? No. It is a Hugo. 
suppose. <laughs> 11, uh, 10 once. 10 twice. Sold to Mogliasso for $10. Okay. Are you tired? Are we done? 74. Basically, number 74. Page 34. One more time. Wait a minute. This napkin. Did I ever do this napkin? Number 15? I did that. Yes, yes, you did. Somebody had to yell it though. And what was the number I just forgot? 74. Thank 74. you. 74. Start again. Page 34. Yep. <laughs> okay, this is toxin. Issue number one, March 1977, put together by Harry and Irene Bell. Mostly Harry. Yep. Uh, Strain at a Gnat, Swallow or Camel by Kevin Williams. Midnight Strikes the Memory by Harry Turner. <coughs> the Bird That Flies on Its Stomach by Rob Jackson. And an art portfolio. Uh, Very minor piece of uh, art portfolio is a stream. Well, it's it's extensive art by Harry Bell. Much of it hand Travel. pencils and, me. <laughs> and clean limbed and beautiful. Would anyone like to offer me five? Five. Or, we have six. several fives. Six. six. Six in the front. Ten. Ten. We have a ten dollar bid. Any advance on ten dollars? No. Yeah. Eleven from Nigel. <coughs> Any advance on one? Twelve from Sandra. Oh, she can. <laughs> oh, she can. Twelve once, twice. Sold to Sandra Bond for twelve dollars. Okay, God. Um, any other requests? Anything else? <laughs> I feel like we've we've really we've done a lot. Why we it so, must yeah. be five thirty, right? Five thirty-five. Still on the table. Five thirty-five. What's still on the table? Are you offering? Are you accepting <laughs> offers for paid up when you're still on the table? Um, certain things, but they don't have to be like that. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Five bucks. Let's just let me go back. Okay, let me go back and make sure there's any. I, I, let me pull anything out that I'm desperately afraid to sell for five dollars. Trumpet there with the Bon Bodhi. Yeah. We didn't move for trumpet with the Bon Bodhi. No, we did trumpet with the Bon Bodhi. Which number is Yeah. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll just actually I'll take that home and put that in my collection. Number what? Uh, I did this to some of the listings. Yep, yep, I know. 65, 65. page 31. All, 60, all 64, page 30. Almost there. Oh, shit. Oh, order. 30. Trumpet number seven. Right. The Long and the Short of It by Phyllis Eisenstein. Uh, sketches by Robert E. Howard. Uh, W.G. Bliss, Jim Gardner, The Broken Sword by George Barr, Column by Offutt and Dan Bates, Jeff Jones cover, Von Bodie interior art. Really cool. Von Bodie interior art in number eight. Okay, so just so this one just has a Jeff Jones cover. So do I have any interest in this at five dollars? Any interest at five dollars? Yeah, Mowgli says, of course. <laughs> Mowgli, well, I'll bet seven against you. All right, 10. I'll go 12. 15. All right, I don't want that. So we're at 15. Any further interest? Once, twice, sold to Mowgli for $15. That was lot 64. So we got to jump another page to go to lot 65 to get to the issue of Trumpet, which has Bodhi's Machines, an art feature by Vaughn Bodhi. Pure Heads in Space by H. H. Hollis. Columns by Andy Offutt and Bates. Uh, Wall and Pond, a folder by Stan, a folio by Stan Taylor. Com the Compost Heat, column by Alex Eisenstein. And another Jeff Jones cover, as you just noted. So, this is the one that does have the Vaughn Bodhi yard in it. So, let's start this at five bucks. Five dollars from Mowgli. Any advance at five dollars? Ten from Rich. 15. 15. No advance on 15. Any further interest in this at 15? It's $16. It's Once, movies. twice, sold to Mowgli for $15. Okay? And so what I was about to do was go over there and look and see if there was anything that just was so valuable that I couldn't afford to let it go. But I think we're, we're about there. I tell you what, 
Um, there's some nice pins there that were sent by Claire Briley for the benefit of Tab. No, Allison Scott. By Allison <laughs> Scott for the benefit of Tab. Let's uh, say those are seven dollars. I'll take the science fiction legal. What? I'll take those as seven legal. The science fiction uh, one, one, <laughs> Well, okay, okay, no, no, no. We, we're gonna we'll, we'll do that. We, we, the science fiction league pin lot number one one six one one six page fifty one <laughs> and opening bid of seven seven dollars. Any advance on seven dollars? No more interest. Okay, it goes to Nigel for seven, and that's what the. Okay, that's okay. I'll go ten. Okay, sorry. Okay, so we have a ten dollar bid in the back, Nigel. Will you advance on ten? Twelve. Twelve from Nigel. It's his. It's his at twelve. All right. Bring it. And let's say the other two are available. I'm not going to auction them. Please make a, a donation to TAP and come tell Sandra how much you, you're going to get for them if you want one of those pins. And then let me just go back here and see if there's anything that I wouldn't give away for five bucks. Uh, and I'm just going to take it and sell it online. And I'm going to, I'll keep it though. Let's see. These are good. That's fine. Yeah. Where are you going to see this? Right. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. Hey, come up on the, bed. the only other place is the world comes randomly. I don't know what will happen. Yeah. 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 So you got a bunch of our So you got a bunch of our So you got a bunch of our So you got a this is much better to work with this one. Yeah. 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 It's supposed to be, I think, um, like to see the wine tasting starting in about yeah. one, minus one minute. Oh, yes, we're supposed to be starting the wine tasting. Right? I saw yes, it. Exactly. Well, at least you do that with the glasses around, necessarily. Uh, right. I think I can do with tasting some wine, frankly. So right. during the evening, around, not the point, really. Oh, well, sorry. No, isn't there anybody going to be watching tonight? Do you think? But there, I'll, I'll broadcast and see what people they can watch. Yeah, because on West Coast, really. Yeah, to be honest, it might be more entertaining. Yeah. It'd be more West Coast. I don't know where they very well perhaps they are. No, I don't know. So so. It's the um, oh, it's it's this evening's. Unless you're interested in the sales, auctions are not necessarily great spectator sports. Um, depends on the auction. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes I mean, I mean and, and Andy is this is quite a lot of a minute I'll Rod Payton. Right. Yeah, that's true, yes. Yes, 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 what it was, she did a competition and got oh, artists to oh, ah, did it and just oh, right, okay. put the name. Right. Well, I guess I'll just mark them down now. I was going to go with that. I don't see if there was anything left myself, but I shot my thumb in the foot a bit. Yeah. <laughs> So they're not fine, but those two are. Great. Twenty-five dollars. 
Take a picture of that Pat and Graham watching the auction. I think it probably was mainly, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I thought Robert might have been watching it. Well, I don't, yes, I'm surprised he did it. He, if, he, if he was, he was doing so. But for this, we're only about two or three people watching at any one time. Yeah, one anyway. is me, so. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. So maybe that it's just Graham was left. Yeah. Anyway, oh, well. I think it's. Switch off the YouTube right? working all over, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Don't worry about that. This is Excuse me, Graham. You know there's a big stack in Brazil. Yes, yes, I know. Right. I'm probably going to have to put them out as freebies this evening and tomorrow. We've got uh, all, uh, all, all put a sort of, you know, sort of <laughs> do, donate what you want to an honesty box type thing. Put yeah, so they, up in the con suite on yes, the yeah, so Yes, I know, but I might do the same thing here because yeah. it doesn't have room. But, 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 but my inkers. Are freebies on condition you lock, <laughs> as usual. Oh, and yeah, and, and write your name on your on, on my list if you if you take one. <laughs> okay, but that's what I'll do with the inkers anyway. But, but, but the others, the other zines, the kind of the anthologies and so on. I'm just wondering. I, I think if we'd say, you know, sort of five dollars each for things like So Train to Immortality and Bellissimo and Time Capsule, mm -hmm. and I, I thought at least ten for the motor reader. I think. I mean, I'll check it down. Motor reader is upstairs. And uh, well, in that, in that case, you make it the same. Yeah, well, we, yes. Yeah, so I bought one, which was donated by Mike, yeah. but but it can go for the same price. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. All right. Well, we're we're ready ready to step up for Come on, man. Yeah, I know that that's what I'm going to be more Double XL in the 